Hi, this is a follow-up to my previous tutorial where we created this scale wave animation. Uh, quite a few people have asked me about actually creating the materials, the camera and lighting setup for this, so that's what I'm going to cover here. So opening up Cinema, this is the scene that we created in the last tutorial, these, um, this wave of scales, but we're going to jump straight into Octane. I'm going to open it up here with Octane and the Live Viewer window. And I like to drag that onto the right hand side. So I have my viewer here and then pressing the render button, I have my live render update on the right hand side. Now I like to first off st set up a few octane settings. Um, I, I change this from, it's usually set to direct lighting, but I change it to path tracing, you get a nicer result. Also change the sample levels down to something lower while I'm actually working on a project and then I'll up them when I actually go to the final render. But diffuse depth, specular depth, this filter size I set to one uh, and, and GI clamp I set to one. Uh, you can play around with these but these are the settings that I've used for this setup. Okay, on our camera we need to add an octane camera tag. So I'm gonna add that on here. Now what I'm gonna do next is add a HDRI environment. So if we go to objects, HDRI environment, and then here I'm gonna add uh, the image texture. And then now I've already got one here, this car studio HDRI um, file, but you could download one from online or you can, uh, I think there are some included within Cinema 4D, but this is just one that I like to use and that I used on, on this render. I got this one from uh, the Pixel Lab, so you can look them up online. Okay, so I've added my HDRI environment and I'm setting the power to free just to lighten it up. Now you can see a little bit of the HDRI environment behind and we don't see it that much in this one, but I, I want this to be completely black in the background. So what you can also add is uh, a texture environment. Now that's everything's lit up because it's currently using this white as the primary environment when we actually want this to be the background. So I can change this to visible environment and then I'm going to change this to black. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually name these so we know what's what. So I'm going to call this one uh, black background and this one uh, HDRI. I'm not too sure why it doesn't name them initially anyway. Okay, so Next what I'm going to do is start creating the materials. So the first thing we'll do is create the gold material. So if we go to objects, uh, sorry, materials and metallic material. I'm going to call this one gold. And I'm going to change on here the specular. Now the specular is what is going to give us that gold color. So I'm going to go on to here and then I'm going to pick a yellow that seems to and, uh, seems to kind of look goldish. Let's have a maybe quite light, something like that. Okay, um, I'm going to drag that onto the diamond. Now you'll notice that obviously everything is gold, so I'm going to change this to gold, and then I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call this one black, take that off and you'll see because we're iterating for, between these two in the honeycomb array that we created, we're offsetting so we've got gold, black, gold, black, gold, black. Obviously one isn't black at the moment though so I've got to create another uh, material, a glossy material, I'll call this black and at the moment I'm going to Actually, for this one, it, in my uh, uh, render, it was like a carbon fiber material. So for this one, what I'm going to do is go into the node editor. And the first thing we do is create an image texture node. And I've got this carbon fiber material uh, that I just downloaded um, online. So I just searched one up on Google. If I open this up you'll see it's just this repeating texture. Okay. 
If I feed that into the diffuse channel, and if we apply the material to the diamond, it would help. You see, we're getting these lines. Now, it's not looking exactly right. So what I like to do is if you press this padlock, that will actually um, display it at the size that you're rendering to. And I think the size that we set this up as was 1000 by 1250. So if I press a padlock, that's it at actual size. So you can see there's the lines on the object. So I'm gonna change this to this cubic for now, that might be fine. Just reset that. Okay, so there's the lines, but they're too light. We obviously want them to be black. So what I'm actually gonna add in here is a gradient. Pipe this image texture into the gradient and the gradient into the diffuse. And what the gradient does is take all the colors from inside the image and then applies this gradient to them. So the lightest areas of the image are white and the darkest areas are black. Now, as we want this to be darker, what we can do is take the white end and actually make that darker and that darkens up our whole material. I actually can't even see the lines at all there. So I'm just gonna bring that up a little and a little bit more. There you go, so you can see those lines. I'm also gonna change uh, the roughness on this because it's super shiny. So we can just move the float a tiny amount and just add a little bit of roughness so it's not, not super clean, the reflections. You can go as far as you want with this. I think I'll leave it about there. Okay, now with the gold, the gold is quite super clean as well at the moment. We want to get a little bit of variation in there so what I'm going to do is go into the node editor for the gold what I'll do is to save this as well at the moment so I go into the gold and I'm going to add another image texture and again this is something I just searched for on Google I just found this grunge texture and I'm going to pipe this one into the roughness map now, when it comes in immediately, it kind of, I don't really like exactly how that looks. So I'm probably gonna add a gradient again. So it's just a very subtle effect. So grab a gradient. And then we'll pipe that in to the roughness. Again, obviously we're just going straight from black to white. So I, I wanna make this darker. I just want quite a subtle effect. There you go. So I've got a little bit of variation in the gold there. Okay, so now we've created our gold material, we've created our black material. Um, what we can do is, now they're very simple materials, you can spend a lot longer trying to refine them, but uh, we're probably in a good enough place where we can start playing around with the camera settings. So if we go along to the camera imager and enable that, then we get all these options where we can change the exposure, the gamma, and um, add lookup tables uh, in this response tab. Uh, and lookup tables are what you use to grade footage in film and video, but we can actually do it live in the viewer in Octane in Cinema 4D. So we can kind of see what look we're going for actually in the program rather than having to render everything out and take it into After Effects or Premiere and then do our uh, post-production. So what I'm going to do here, I, I've obviously got my settings that I use for the, uh, the Instagram post, so I'm going to go with that for the moment. I think I use this one, the Ektachrome E100SCD, that obviously looks um, totally wrong. But that's you can fix that by changing the exposure and the gamma. So if I bring up the exposure and change the gamma, then we get a nicer look there. And then we can start seeing in the reflections that we've got in the final post, we see that they're picking up the light when it creates that wave. Okay, I might just change settings a little tiny bit so I'm gonna maybe bring the power the overall 
HDRI down a little bit. I do I don't mind it when it blows out here. And you get this contrast as it moves. What I might actually do is um, add in a light as well. So if we go to objects and lights and create an octane targeted area light. So it creates this target which currently is in the middle of the scene and then we can take the light and select it. We can move that around. I think I'm going to place it in front because what I want to do is I want the light to pick up on the front edges. So I'm just going to find somewhere. Let's have a look. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so I like the light picking up on these edges here. Yeah, that was, I think that was actually okay where it was. It's kind of bright, so I'm going to turn that down. There we go. Maybe tweak that up a little bit. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to the camera, the camera imager tab. I'm going to turn on the post processing tab, and now here we can add some bloom in, and this bloom will kind of give it this kind of ethereal look blowing out the the lighter areas so yeah, there's quite nice quite nice feel to the whole thing so um what i can do is let's go back in close again uh, another thing that i like to do is actually put some depth of field on so to do that we'll go back to the fin lens go to depth of field and it's usually on autofocus uh, that's set by octane, but if we turn that off, then we can change the focal depth and the aperture. So the aperture is basically how much it's going to blur the uh, camera by. So if I just turn this up to something high, super high, like 30, then it's obviously blurring everything. But if we click on this tab here, we can actually pick any point on the screen where we want to focus on. So if I pick this point here, it's going to focus there, but you can see we're getting the depth of field falling off above and um, below it. If I zoom back out again, oh, and this is another thing you need to remember is that when you've clicked this, I was going to move the screen, but if I click it, it's, it's just resetting the focus. So you've got to make sure that you click off of that and then you can move the screen. But there you go. See, we're getting that depth of field. You know, you could up this to something ridiculous if you wanted a really, really shallow depth of field. But I'm just going to go to about 30. So um, that's basically it. I think that basically wraps it up. That's how we get the materials, lighting and colouring for this scale wave animation. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you like this tutorial and I'll plan to do more soon. Okay, thank you. Bye.